So today is the final khutbah uh, of this Ramadan and uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah, accept our qiyam, accept our siyam and accept all of our du'as inshallah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to reconcile our in relationships inshallah ta'ala so that we can celebrate Eid together with our families and communities inshallah ta'ala I want to just uh, use this khutbah in the beginning to mention the rights of the parents. In the last five to seven minutes, I'm going to tell you why I selected this topic, why Ramadan is ending, because actually Rasulullah indicated a relationship between Ramadan and parents in, in multiple relations, and I will take my last few minutes for that, inshallah. Uh, but before we can start, just as a disclaimer, just as an introduction, whenever we speak about the rights of the parents, this is for you, not for your kids. <laughs> Many times if you are listening to this with your kids sitting right next to you, you would say, son, listen now what Imam have to say. No, no, no. You are son also. You are daughter also. Maybe your parents aren't alive, maybe one of them is alive, maybe both of them passed away. But you have to listen to this for your sake, not for your kids said that, okay, kids, listen to now what Imam have to say. Second, it's one of the most difficult topics for any speaker to speak about these social issues. How to be a nice husband, how to be a nice wife, how to be a nice son, how to be a nice daughter, how to be a nice parent. Because these social issues require what? You have your own family. Are you practicing what you are preaching? So don't think when I'm speaking about the word Quran, have to say that I'm my realistic son. We all are struggling. You make God for me, I'll make God for you. But don't, don't idealize anyone because we all are struggling. Uh, and third, whatever the ayat and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come rights of the parents, just think that this is applicable to both son and daughter equally. And whether you are married or you are still single. Because many times, especially with the daughters, after their marriage, we think they don't have rights for the parents. No, they have still have the rights for the parents. Now let's just start. This is Surah Al-Isra, 23, 24, 25. I'm going to give a brief a reflection and explanation of these ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by saying, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُرُ إِلَّا إِلَّا Your Lord, your Rabb, your Master have decided this, that you won't worship anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after that, you will be nice to your parents. You will do ihsan with your parents. This theme in the Quran is repeated five, six times. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, you won't worship anything except Him, and you have to be nice to parents. Five, six times. Right after His right, Allah even mentioned the rights of the parents. When I was exposed to this passage for the first time in my life, I used to ponder why, what's the wisdom behind this? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right after mentioning that you should not worship anything except Allah, you will mention the rights of the parents. And in other places also, why? And I actually see the books of the Fazil. And recently I came up with six reasons. SubhanAllah. The difference. I don't think there can be many more, but I found only six because of my limited knowledge. And I just want to share that. And every point given by the scholar has so much wisdom. Why Allah mentioned his right? And then immediately after that, by the poor parents. First, who is our creator? Allah. In the unseen world. Who is reason of our creation in the seen world? Our parents. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So, the appropriate Allah will mention 
bearing his life after his Christ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us infinite favors, yes or no? Who in the world will give you infinite favor from the day one? Your parents. If your friend gives you a ride in the snow in January, you're going to text him 10 times a day. Text, bro. Your parents are doing this every single day when you are a young kid. We take favors of Allah for granted, right? We take favors of our parents for granted. Fourth, this shows, the sequence shows, who comes first? Allah or parents? Allah comes first and then parents come second. And fifth, and I would this is very important in our times. This differentiate between the rights of parents according to Islam versus the rights of parents according to liberalism or modern day mindset. Ibn Ashu says the Indian Islam al tafkir muqaddar al Islam al amal. He says the reason why Allah mentioned his rights and then rights of parents is so that Allah can make us ideologically strong. That you do not have to be nice to your parents for the sake of your parents. You have to be nice to your parents for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a difference. Because if you will love your parents, if you will be nice to your parents for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will follow the standards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you say, no, 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 I have to be nice with everyone, I have to be nice with parents regardless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. Then you will come up with your own standards. And if you see this Western world where family life is being snatched or uprooted completely, where they will throw their parents in old house and once in a year, maybe Christmas or Thanksgiving, they will visit, take a selfie, post on their social media. If you will ask them, are you a good son? Are you a good daughter? Do they say that we are not a good son? No. We are too arrogant to accept this. They might say that they are a good son according to them. But not according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because until you follow the standards given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not good son or daughter. And that's why it's important. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you follow his advice, and you be nice to your parents. And the last but not the least, Allah says, worship him alone and then be nice to your parents. It means no matter how nice you are with your parents, may Allah reward you for that in dunya, but it will all be in vain in Akhirah if you are not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Now let's start this. You have to do with your parents. I will come to this word in a minute. If your parents reach to the old age and they are with you, if your parents reach to the old age, al kibar and they are in them, they are with you, one of them or both of them? This is very interesting in Surah Al-Isra. Other places in the Quran doesn't go this deep that parents will reach to old age, one of them or both of them, no. There was a moment by the Ihsan, be nice to your parents. Why they are these? A special emphasis is coming. When they are especially in the old age, when they are with you, one of them or both of them. Because chances are, when they are in old age, there are chances then both of them will not be alive. That's why this description has to come. One of them or both of them? Most of us are unfortunate. When your parents are old, one of them will leave early. Or oh, both of them will leave. So if both of your parents are alive, you have two Jannah in your home. If one of your parents is alive, you have at least one Jannah for you. You know, Allah says old age especially here. You have to be nice to parents regardless of their age, but especially when it comes to the old age. Why? What's so special about the old age? When you are young, you are hard blooded and your parents are old, you know there are a few things happening. You will think rationally, you will think intellectually in all your arguments, in all your interactions. Your parents will think emotionally. They won't be able to think critically or rationally. They might need your support. They might need your time, maybe need your financial help because of their weakness. And that demands that extra exam, that extra nice behavior, that extra kind behavior. And that is all that is emphasizing. You have to be nice to your parents, but especially when they are old. You know, this is very interesting. When Allah SWT says you have to be nice to the parents when they are old, especially when they are old. Because when they are old, 
they won't ever do understand few things what you're doing in your life, especially the generation gap is increasing so much. So maybe, the, and Allah says the alphabet to you. So they are constantly criticizing the way you do things because that doesn't fulfill their standards. So they might say, oh, you don't know how to raise your kids. You don't know how to keep your house clean or car clean. You don't know how to discipline your kids. So on, so forth. And we would say, as young kids, Abba, Mom, why don't you understand? No. They won't change. They won't understand. You would expect 70-year-old men and 65-year-old women to change at this point. At this point. You have to change. I have to change. We have to change our expectation. I'm not saying accept abuse or oppression. No, no, no. But these kinds of things change yourself. Adjust yourself. Accept the reality your parents won't change in this age. What will be the What is Ihsan with the parents? This word is repeatedly comes with the parents. Do Ihsan with your parents. Do Ihsan with your parents. One meaning of Ihsan is to have an excellent relationship with your parents. Other meaning of Ahsan is to have complete focus and they are talking to you no text. Focus on your parents. One other meaning of Ahsan is when your parents are expecting you to do something, you do something beyond their expectation. This is also the meaning of Ahsan. Ahsan Allah al Fam salah is obligatory. Ahsan is to pray nafil also. So your parents will expect you, you take care of them when they are old. You do something extra what they are not expecting from you. This is considered as mobil validating ihsana. Now what is ihsan in our time? Just give your mom a text message, I love you Allah, with a love emoji. And you see a smile on her face, subhanAllah. When you are coming, driving, just text your dad if he's alive. The dad. I'm coming from grocery store, do you want me to bring something? Mom, you are sitting on the couch, let me massage your feet. Let me do the dishes. And because usually you don't do these things, this is considered as ihsan. They would never expect this from you. You know, when kids grow old, when they leave the nest, that's a completely different ballgame altogether. When you are in the nest and you are financially dependent on your kids, then there is a reason to do Ihsan, at least a selfish reason. But now you leave the nest, now you don't even have that financial selfish reason. Now you're not independent, now you're, now you're independent, now you're independent of them. Even when you're making some big, strong decision, even though you're less left the nest, consult with your parents. Papa, I'm actually planning to buy this house, what, what would be your advice? Mom, I'm planning to do this, what, what would be your suggestion? Even if they don't know anything about that idea. Even if they don't know anything about real estate, ask them. Ask them. Well, like they will feel very happy that our son is giving us importance, our daughter is giving us importance. And subhanAllah, I've said this before. We all want our kids to respect us, yes or no? We all want our kids to respect us. Allah subhanAllah gave a formula to the Rahman how to do that. Allah says, Al Jazal Ihsan, in the Rahsan, that if you do Ahsan, the composition of Ahsan is only Ahsan. Allah says this. If you do Ahsan with your parents, guess what? Allah will give you the kids who will do Ahsan with them. And this is very logical, very natural. If I will respectfully talk to my father and my mom, and my kids are looking at me, guess what? They will see how a son should talk to the father. But if I'm screaming and yelling at them, and my kids are looking at me, Guess what they are learning? This is a way how we talk to your parents when they are old. So Al Jazam Al Jazam Ihsan in the Ihsan is actually very logical from this perspective. Allah knows. And Allah SWT says, when your parents are old, one of them or both of them. Fada taqullahuma uf. This is the most impossible ayah for most of us right now to apply. But may Allah give us tawfiq. The standards we have of the parents' rights in our society versus the standards of Quran. The huge gap, especially regarding this phrase of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah won't put burden more than our capacity. So inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't and us accountable more than a more than what we cannot be. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen to this. Do not even say oof to your parents. You know what is oof? 
literally, there is a dirt in the nails. Pre Quranic usage of the word of that dirt, nail clippings, they would throw it and discuss, they would say this is of. That's how they would use the word of. Then this word was coined as to use as the least amount of frustration you would show. Least amount of frustration. Oof. Like in English, oh. That's oof. Least. Least amount of frustration. Yesterday I was reading in the seer. Tafsir of Mujahid, Mujahid was a student of Ibn Abbas and Tabi'in. And I was surprised of how he gave this Tafsir. He says, What does Matan Kodama of me? This is coming from Tabi'in. He says, Fadatan Kodama of means, unless talking about old parents, right? When your parents are old, there are some time when they won't be able to use restroom and you have to change their diapers. And maybe they are old, maybe they will have urinary inconsistency and you will see drops of urine. Don't show your disgust. Don't show your frustration. Why? Because they have done this every single day that you were here. And now when they are doing this, it's just keep paying that ihsan. Why are you are feeling bad? Allah Akbar. This is all together, such a high standard that Allah SWT give us sons and daughters who can fulfill this. Ameen Ya Rabbi. And will make us one. Ameen Ya Rabbi. You know, but general tafsir of Kof in and from the layman perspective is whenever your parents are asking you to do something, you have to do this unless you are doing something where you can respectfully say that I will do this later. If they are asking you to give a glass of water, they should not even ask you once they enter, you should ask them, Dad, do you need a glass of water? Mom. A glass of water. Where are these standards today? SubhanAllah. Then Allah says, Wala tanharuna. Do not stream at your parents. Do not yell at your parents. Do not freak out at your parents. Karima. And talk to them in a respectful way. Talk to them in the generous way. Talk to them in the polite way. You know, it's very interesting. Allah says, Wakullahuma. Talk to both of them. Talk to both of them. Unless telling us, talk to your parents. Talk to your parents. It means what? Give them time. Even if it's a one minute phone call, if they're not living with you, if they're staying with you, just give them five minutes. Sit with them, sit with them on couch. Talk to them. Unless asking us to talk to them. Because when parents are old, the only thing they will crave, the only thing they will crave, and on their cell phone, a message from the son or daughter. Papa, how are you doing today? Mom, how are you doing today? Usually, when our friend will text us, and our dad will text us, or mom will text us, which text we will open first? Which text we will respond first? And which text we should respond first as a Muslim? I don't want to embarrass, I know we all are embarrassed in this situation. But these are the Quranic standards of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Next time, and this is a very great depiction of how the parents should be treated in house, especially when they are old. Allah says, Baqfiz lahuma janaha dhulli mina rahma. And lower your wings of humility out of mercy. Now, you have to understand this. Back in the days, this phrase of janaha qayy, a bird lowering its wings to save the family was used. So bird is going to protect the family and the, uh, in the nest to do this whenever any calamity will come, to protect the family members. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now you are young, now you are head of the family, roles are changed, now they are old, they are weak, they need your protection. And what is their weakness, their old age? Don't give them sarcastic comments. Take care of them. Just like they took care of you when you were young. When you were weak, they took care of you. Now they are weak. Take care of them. And lower your wings out of mercy. Don't say this, oh, I have to do this with my old parents. No, do this out of love and mercy. Because they did the same thing when you were young. And then the last thing. After doing all this, the natural, natural dua which will come. Natural dua which will come. That don't say oof to your parents, 
Now they are old because they didn't say, oh, to you when you were young and you were pooping around. Don't scream at them, wala tanhauma, because they didn't scream at you when you messed up when you were young. Do ihsan with your parents and they are old because they were doing ihsan with you when you were young. Naturally a dua will come. Naturally a dua will come. Rabbi rahamuma kama rabbi yani sabira. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents. Just like they had mercy on me when I was young. Rabbi yani tarbiya. Constantly, every single stage, they had mercy on me. They had sleepless night. My dad couldn't sleep. My mom couldn't work. Their priorities were changed just because of me. Allah have mercy on that. And this is very interesting. Very interesting. I was reading with Tafsir. And there's so many gems from the Quran which will come out, right? Every time you look in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do everything we can do for our parents. And then make dua also. Right? It's like reciprocal, what our parents do with us. Our parents will do whatever they can to raise us. And still they will make dua for our success, right? Here. It's our time to pay back to our parents. We will do whatever we can for our parents. Don't say, oh, do not scream at them. Do ihsan with them. Do more than your expectation. But instead of something is missing, instead of there is a deficiency, make dua for them. SubhanAllah. Some Sahaba, they made this dua as a mandatory dua. That's a compulsory dua for them in every salah. After At-Tahiyyat and Allahumma salli ala, before they would say salah, they would ask this dua. This dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the one who is going to ask this dua constantly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is just the idealistic Islamic teaching, right? But Islam also gave us realistic teaching also. Maybe there are cases in our community where parents are abusive, where parents are cursive, and they might use Abil Walidini Ahsana. But still, they are abusive and oppressive. What to do at that time? Allah says, Allah is well aware of what is in your heart. If sometime you have to disagree with them because you cannot support abuse, you cannot support oppression, you cannot support zulm, then Allah knows what is in your heart. If sometime you have to scream the voice for a legitimate reason, what can be a legitimate reason? You scream the voice in front of parents. <laughs> If your father is an old man, diabetic, and if he's eating sugar, left and right, it's like last night, put up down, left and right. You have to scream at him because it is harmful for him. But Allah knows what is in your heart. Allah knows what is in your heart. You're doing this out of love, not out of hate, not out of disrespect. If your mother is doing something which is oppressive, which is zulm, kiss, his, kiss her for it. But say, Mom, I can't do this. I can't support you in this oppression. But I still love you. At that time, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in our heart. Just last two things. Um, what to do when parents are not in the dunya? They both have passed away. So one of them have passed away. And then how all this related to the ending of Allah, inshallah. First, very briefly, if your parents passed away, if you are one of those unfortunate brother or sister that both of their children have left, or one of their children have left, then first thing, give charity on their behalf. Donate money on their behalf. Whatever cause you think, give money on their behalf. It will be a sadaqa jari, and this is coming directly from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Second, pay off their debts. Whether it's spiritual debt they have, hajj, fasting, or financial debt, pay off their debt. Make dua for them constantly. Constantly make dua for them. Uh, there's a hadith in Ibn Majah. Where actually Rasulullah sallallahu says, Inna rajula la tawfa'a darajahu fil jannah fayakum anna hatha fayuqal istighfari wa dhikra. A man, after his death, his status will be elevated. And then he'll say, how come this is, elevation is coming now after I passed away after such a long time? He said, because your son is making dua for you, that your sins should be forgiven, so we are elevating your status in jannah subhanallah. Be nice to their friends and relatives. If your parents passed away, have nice akhlaq, have nice character when meeting with their relatives and their family friends. Because there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, son of Umar al Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar. Once he was walking with his donkey, he was riding and he had a turban with his friends. 
he saw a young man whose father was a friend of his father, whose father was a friend of Umar ibn Khattab. So he recognizes him, he says, uh, uh, after talking to him, take this turban as a gift and take this donkey as a gift. And he didn't have any donkey, so his friends asked, now what you will do? And what you give this? A turban would be sufficient. So he says this in the He says, the best act of kindness is for a man to honor his father's friend after he has died. And that's what I'm doing. So that's also one of the things we can do. Now, why I'm discussing this in the ending of Ramadan? You know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi draws this connection between the parents, old parents especially, or one of them, and Ramadan, an ending of Ramadan. In Hadith in Sahih Ibn Hibban, which I just recited in the beginning, he says once he climbed, famous Hadith, he climbed a uh, member, and that, that time, Mimbar had three steps, our Mimbar had two steps, actually there are three steps, technically. So three steps, three pulpit, three steps, pulpit, Amin, Amin, Amin. When he started the khutbah, he saw a curiosity in the Sahaba's hat. The Prophet Rasulullah said, Amin, 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 without anyone making dua. So Rasulullah clarified this, Rasulullah said, Jibreel al Islam came to me, he made three dua, and he asked me to say Amin. And before I can tell you this three dua, can you imagine the intensity of this dua? This is a priority mail. <laughs> Jibreel Islam is asking, Rasulullah saying, Ameen. You cannot get better than this. <laughs> There's no way this dua can get rejected. First of all, Jibreel Islam asked, Is man adraka shahur rabbam alam yukfar lahu falam falakhal falakhal na falakhal 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 na Whoever gets the month of Ramadan, whoever sees the month of Ramadan, comes and go, comes and go, and he's not able to make his sins forgiven by worshipping in that month, by seeking forgiveness of Allah in that month, may Allah destroy that person. And Rasulullah said, Ameen on this dua. Can you imagine this? Because it's an easy opportunity for all of us. And if you didn't use it, then you deserve destruction. But then the second dua, month of Ramadan will go within a month, right? But second dua, وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ أَبْوَيْنِي أَوْ أَحَدُهُمَا فَلَمْ يَبَرَّهُمَا فَمَا تَفَدَفَ لَنَّا and if the parents of this person is alive, or one of them, or both of them, again, and he cannot gain Jannah by servicing them, in other narration, he was going to be thrown in fire. And Rasulullah said, Ameen on this one. And then third is that whoever heard the hears the name of Prophet Muhammad and he didn't say Salawat, at least Allah said that, he, um, the Fadda Khalil he was going to get hellfire. He was going to protect us from hand. Allah wants to do now. Second reason why the connection is so obvious in Ramadan, we know gates of Jannah are open, right? So, Fahabab al Jannah. You know what Prophet Muhammad said about parents? He said, Al Walid al Abwal al Jannah. Father is the middle gate of Jannah. Father? is the middle gate of Jannah. Sisters, don't be bad, I'll come to you, inshallah. But fathers are the middle gate of Jannah. Now it's up to you. You want to waste this opportunity? You want to close this door for Jannah? Or you want to hold it tight? Similarly, we worship extra hard in the month of Ramadan. Why? Why this entire qiyam and tahajjud and atakaf and Quran and dua? We want Jannah, right? Now Rasulullah said this one Sahaba came and he says, Rasulullah Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, I don't want to absorb the jinn to I want to go to a battle. Obviously I want Jinnah, that's why. But I want to seek your counsel. Should I go? You know what Rasulullah said to him? Rasulullah says, Allah in home. Do you have a mom? Do you have a mother? He says, Yes, I have. He says, Fa'anzamha. Fa'anzamha. Fa'inna jinnah tahtari jaleha. Then hold tight to her. Because your Jannah is under her feet. SubhanAllah. Can you see an obvious relationship? You know why I'm saying this? Ramadan will end within a day or two. But if Ramadan doesn't improve our relationship with our parents, Ramadan is useless, I'm sorry. Ramadan will end within a day or two. But still you have an opportunity to go to Jannah if your parents are alive. Or one of them is alive. Month of mercy will go. 
but the source of mercy are in your house. It's very easy. There's no rocket science. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us obedient sons and obedient daughters, inshallah. Let's make dua for the entire Ummah. Allahumma salli ala Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al-Dina Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muh